once. Part one, offered once. Christ came and offered himself one time. Once for all. He died once for all. A single offering sealed our destiny for eternity. Put your hands together for Jesus. Now, before I break down this, uh, uh, this uh, series of uh, sermon, which is going to be on offered once, this is part one. Uh, during the week, one of our brothers sent me a question through the WhatsApp. I thank God for that, brother. Thank you for that question. As a matter of fact, that question changed uh, this message. So made me to uh, kind of trying to dwell a little bit on his question before we proceed and uh, tackle the series before us. Uh, just the summary of the question, he asks this. If Christ did not die, what will happen to us? That was the summary of his question. He said, he's just thinking from his inquisitive mind that what if Christ did not die? What's going to happen to the human race? And I added to that question. We're going to look at that question this morning. And then, I mean, this afternoon, and then we'll try as much as possible to see part of the beginning of the uh, topic offered once. As a matter of fact, this question also is going to help us to understand offered once. I also reinforced that question. I added my own to that question, and I said, I didn't send the answer to him on that, but I said, if Christ did not resurrect, from the grave, what will happen to human, human race? Let us assume that Jesus died, but he did not resurrect. What do you think is going to happen to our race? What do you think is going to be our fate? What's going to happen to our destiny, our eternal destiny? So let us tackle these two questions based on the scriptures. You remember the, four, the five pillars, what we call the, um, the solar, the five solars, according to Martin Luther. Uh, the reformer, um, you remember that we tackled that. So that is going to also going to help us to answer this question. And those five uh, solars, the first one is, you could arrange it as you like, that our salvation is by grace alone. Tell somebody, by grace alone. So when you say these pillars or these solars over and over again, it gets stick to your brain. You don't want to forget that. Our salvation is by grace alone. The second one, our salvation is through faith alone. That is by faith alone. The third one, the third solar, or the third pillar of our salvation, of our Christianity, our salvation is in Christ alone. People can sit in the front, everywhere. Our salvation is by Christ what? Alone, by Christ alone. And the fourth one, somebody tell me the fourth one. Thank you. Based on the scripture, alone. And what is the last one? Thank you. And God takes the glory, alone. He doesn't want to share his glory with anyone. So, one, by grace alone, by faith alone, uh, in Christ alone, as based on the scriptures, and God takes the glory alone. So those five uh, solas, very important to understand this question. So let's go to the first question. The brother asked me, if Christ did not die, so it got to be based, the answer must be based on the scriptures. So if somebody is telling you anything about Christianity and cannot confirm this in the scriptures, don't take it. The scripture is the baseline. Anything outside the scriptures, do not take it, please. So we are going to answer this question based on the scriptures. If Christ did not die, Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, verse 10. 
For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So if Christ did not die, there will be no reconciliation with God. And if we do not reconcile with God, we cannot have peace with God, and there is no eternity with God for us. If Christ did not die, if Christ did not come here and then die, and die for our sins, there will be no reconciliation with God, period. No reconciliation with God. Based on the scriptures, Romans 5.10, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, through which death? Of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. If he did not die, then he cannot offer his life. Because the life of any human beings or any animal or whatever is in the blood. So if the blood is not shed, that life cannot be taken. You know, through blood, you can see, you can know many things about your, bo your body. Doctors, nurses, or medical people, we know so much about you when they analyze your blood, right? The life of any human beings or any animal or whatever is in the blood. So if he did not die, then his blood is not shed. Is that not true? Which means there is no remission for sins. So if Christ did not die, the, his blood is not shed. When somebody dies, the blood is shed. So if he fails to die, he cannot shed the blood. And then we are in trouble. Because without shedding of blood, there is no remission for sins. Are we getting there? If Christ did not die. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. Hebrews 9 verse 22. You can put down these verses. Or you can go back to listen to this message. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And with that shedding of blood, there is no remission. That is why the priests of that time, they have to kill and kill and atone for sin in the tabernacle. They use pigeons. They use, uh, you know, uh, lamp. You know, they use all these things to, um, to shed the blood, to appease, to remit to atone for the sins of the people. Jesus did it one time. One time. He offered himself. His death is very important. So if he did not die, there is no what? No remissions for our sins. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. Leviticus 17 verse 11. We are still on this series. Offered once, part one. For the life of the flesh is where? Is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Water cannot do it. Food cannot do it. The flesh cannot do it. Only the blood can atone. When the Israelites were in Goshen in Egypt and they were to leave to the promised land after four and thirty years of slavery... The last straw that broke the camel back of the um, pharaoh was the killing of the first shard, the first you know, uh, shard in that land. And um, you know what? God spared the life of those that were in Goshen, the, uh, the Jews, just because of the shedding of the blood. So they were asked to, to kill a lamb and mark the lintels of their houses with the blood of that lamb. So in, house, in any house where the blood is marked, no death. When the, um, the angel of death will be passing over in the night, it will pass over that house. Why? Because there is a mark of the blood. People can sit in the front. You know, you can even sit on my seat. Amen? Amen. So, if you don't shed the blood and use the blood for atonement, there can be no remissions there can be no remission for sins. So if Christ did not die, what happened? No remission, no atonement for our sins. And of course, it's not just any blood. 
for this case. It's not just any blood. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 19 says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. God will not take anything that is with any damage or blemish or any spot to do it for us. It got to be the blood of a lamb without any blemish. That was why Jesus did it. And when Jesus completed it, he said, it is what? Finished. Not just anybody can die. Not just any, any kind of blood you can use for the atonement. In this case, it got to be a blood without a blemish. And Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says, in him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Do we, do we kind of answer that question? If Christ did not die, your sin cannot be forgiven. If Christ did not die, your sin cannot be atoned for. There will be no reconciliation. There will be no forgiveness for our sins. So the death of Christ is very important. And not just any death. It got to be a slow death. A slow death. It's not like shooting that person. They didn't do, they didn't just, they can, you know, the Roman soldier can just come take a sword, pian, take, head, take the head of Jesus off, right? They want it to be a slow death. Because the wages of sin is death. So it got to be slow death. Nail his hand, nail his hand here, nail his, 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 his feet here, you know, nail his head here, nail his on there, and it was. Suffering, it was suffering, it was suffering, it was suffering. I would have asked that they project the kind of picture like that, but some of you would leave the congregation because it's so touching. See that kind of suffering. And he suffered not because of his own sins, but because of the sins of the old world. Jesus, we appreciate you. We are grateful. If he did not die, we are in trouble. Our sins cannot be forgiven. No reconciliation with God. No peace with God. Now, we go to the next question. Maybe we finish this question and then we close. Ah. If Christ did not resurrect from the grave, let's assume that, that Jesus died. We all, everybody confirmed that he, he died. Because after the whole episode you know, completed, they came to Jesus Christ because the, the way the Roman soldiers would do it, uh, they want to ensure that that person is totally dead. So they go to break the bones of that person, break the bones, break everything, to see if that person will respond or anything, to know that if this person is dead or not. So they came to Jesus Christ, and then they look at him. Oh, there's no need, there's no need to do what? To break his bones because he was dead already. He preceded those two thieves, nailed on the cross with him. He went to those robbers, some robbers, checked them. They did finish those one, broke their bones and everything to ensure that they were totally dead. But for Jesus Christ, he was already dead. Now, let's assume that it's confirmed. He just died like that and he did not resurrect. What do you think is going to happen? It means he just died like my father died. It means he just died like any other prophet or any other leaders you could think of. He just died. He died. So if he, if, if he did not resurrect, we are in trouble. Let's see what the scripture is saying. It must be what? Based on the scriptures alone. Don't forget the five the solas. It's helping us. By faith alone, by grace alone, in Christ alone, based on the scriptures, and God, God takes the glory alone. So let's look at this. First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 12. First Corinthians 15 from verse 12. Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the grave, or from the dead rather, how do some, of, some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? We are going to read this to verse 19. So please 
project this as we, as we proceed. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty. And your faith is also empty. Our coming together this morning is of no use. It's meaningless. If Christ did not resurrect. Now we go to verse 13. I mean verse 15. Yes, and we have found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not rise. I mean, no. Whom he did not raise up. Whom he did not raise up. If in fact the dead do not rise. Verse 16. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who are falling asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. Another, another version, we call it miserable. You will, not be, you will not have the miserable life in the mighty name of Jesus. You will, not, you, you will not have a pitiable life in the mighty name of Jesus. So if Christ is not risen, then it means we we'll die, we we'll die. If Christ is not risen, it means that Christ died, he died for us so we can have a good life here. So there is no promise of good life in eternity. For he resurrected the third day so that we we'll know that if when we also die, we're going to see that as we continue this message offered once. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once, one time to die, once to die. After death is judgment. So it means that if Christ did not resurrect, then he died for us so we can have good life here. And that will be it. Well, so when we passed, we passed. No eternity, no peace with God. Everything ended. Of course, maybe even we continue in hell, in a place of pain. But because he has risen, the Bible said that we also have hope that we will rise if we pass. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, from verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. That is why... When any of our loved ones passed, we are not sorrowful, we are not weeping like those who, who don't have hope. Because we know that according to the scriptures, we are going to see them again if they are Christians, if they are born again. We are going to see them again. The only problem is if we are not born again, you may see them, but we are not going to be together. I'm assuming we can see that because the rich man saw Lazarus. Lazarus saw the rich man. Though they cannot go to each other because they were in a different compartment. One, one was having his eternity in a place of suffering, sorrow, pain. And the other one was having his own in a place of peace and joy. And they cannot cross over. So if you want your loved one to be with you, if you're a Christian, you are born again, and you want your loved one to be with you after you will have passed this place or after they will have passed, you want to preach the gospel to your loved ones. And you also want to be born again. Do I ask, have we answered those two questions? If Christ did not die, and if Christ did not resurrect, if he didn't die, no reconciliation, no peace with God, our sins are not forgiven, and if he did not resurrect, we have, our hope is only going to be in this place. But thank Jesus, he died and he resurrected. Let's see some of those things. Let's see some beginning of offered ones, offered ones. Hebrews chapter 9 from verse 20, uh, just verse 25. Let, let's go from verse 25. Hebrews chapter 9 from verse 25. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. Not that. He will continue to, you know, go in like the high priest goes in once in a year to atone for the sin of the people. And the high priest, because the high priest is also, I mean, he's not a perfect person. He's a woman being like you, like me. He's 
not perfect. He will have to atone for his own sin first. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, when I read these things in the Bible, especially in Leviticus, you just wonder. You don't want to do that kind of a job, job of high priest. You don't want to do it. It's a long story. The high priest goes to the Holy of Holies once in a year with the sins of the old people. But before he goes, he will first atone for his own sin at the outside court. Because if he goes into the Holy of Holies without his sin being forgiven, he will die right there. See, that time there is no grace. We're talking about grace alone. That time you do anything wrong by law, you are gone. No mercy. Jesus Christ brought us mercy. His death brought us grace with God. He brought us peace. Now you can stand and say, God's head is not right. You can still live longer than the person who says, God, you are good. Thank you. Because of his grace, because of his mercy. But the time of the law, you mess up. You've mess, if you mess around, you are messed up. There's, there's no, let's wait and see. So the high priest, they got to get a chain and tie it in the leg of the high priest. And they will draw the rope outside the holy of holies. And they will put a bell there. So why the high priest? High priest will have to go there once in a year alone. So when it's there, you can read this account in the Bible, especially in Leviticus. Once it's inside there, and you know it will be busy. You'll be hearing the noise when it's moving around. You're atoning for sin. Oh, I turn for Mr. Lagbaja. Oh, hey, hey, hey. See, Mama K. Oh, see the sin of uh, this tribe, oh, tribe of Judah. Hey, see the sins of the, the tribe of Benjamin. See, so we are atoning for the sins of the people. If peradventure he mess up, what happened to him? Dead, right there. And nobody. Until you are the next high priest. Nobody's going to go inside and bring him out. Who wants to die? Because if, if, you, go, if you go in there and you are bringing him out, and the house of Aaron is supposed to have the high priest from the house of Aaron. We have the Levite also that will be serving with Aaron. But from the house of Aaron, as we, we produce the next what? The next high priest. So until another one is produced, nobody's going to go in there and go and drag him. So they will use what? Hope the chain is not going to cut. <laughs> they will use the chain and they will do what? They will drag him out. God is great. We want to thank Jesus Christ. Now we have access to God. You don't need any high priest. As a matter of fact, you don't need a pastor to have access to God. Anyone that calls on the name of the Lord, the same shall be what? You, you know, you approach pastors, maybe just to, you know, to you know, pray with you, corporate prayer, you know, prayer of agreement, to cancel you, it's on that. But you yourself, you are an high priest. You are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. You have access to God. That tent, that curtain of the Holy of Holy, what happened when Jesus died? Open wide. No more secret there. Anybody can go in there. Anybody can. After we finish, you know, this we, this, we have this one just so that the pastor, when he's preaching, everybody can see the pastor. Nothing special per se. So that everybody can see the pastor. You can come pray here. That is good. But after service, you see some children. What do they do? They come here. They dance. They do masquerade. Mask what, what do you call this? Masquerade. They jump and roll and roll and roll. What happened to those children? Nothing. Because it's grace. It's mercy. It's God's favor. Nothing happened to them. Because Jesus died for all this. Praise the Lord. The death of Jesus Christ opened everything. Removed the partition. Removed the obstacle. Removed, brought us to God with peace. And we'll continue this. I, won't, I don't want to continue the Hebrew chapter 9. Uh, in the part two, we'll continue to read everything and see how Jesus Christ entered there once and for all. And then uh, we'll pray. But we'll see that his own offering was once and for all because he, no sin was found in him. There's no time for me to go through all these things. 
I just want to say this thing, this one, first for us, um, that we need to know this issue of Christ dying for us, uh, Christ resurrected, this and that, we must not take it for granted. You need to review your life. Are you a Christian? Are you born again? How can you be part of the one Christ died for? Or how can you be part of the one that have taken the advantage of his death on the cross of Calvary? There must be a conversion and there must be a believing. Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10 says that if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and uh, you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be part of those people he died for. You have to believe in your heart. You have to confess with your mouth. You have to repent of your sins. Say, for with the heart, one believes unto what? Righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Don't just be in the crowd. Make sure that you believe in your heart is death. First is birth. Then is death and is resurrection. You must believe this. You must accept it. It's very important. You must have faith that what he did on the cross is enough. John chapter 3 from verse 15 to 17. John chapter 3 from verse 15. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. This is very important. And that's why we're here. We're not in a clubhouse. We want to continue to walk the issue of eternal life with him. We want to continue to embrace it, the work he did and tell others. Verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do we all understand this? Hello? You must believe that Christ died for you. You must have set the offer on the cross of Calvary. You must embrace that by faith that what it did is enough. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Only through Christ can, can we be saved. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. No man can go back to God in peace. Without Christ. John chapter 6 verse 40 says, And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day, because he himself resurrected. So he can raise you up the last day. If somebody is promised you something he, does, he or she does not have, don't believe it. You cannot give somebody what you don't have. He's promising you to raise you up the last day because he himself is risen now. He's no longer dead. He's not in the grave. Happy Easter to everybody. John chapter 6 verse 47. Jesus said, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. So to have everlasting life, you must believe in Christ. In Christ alone. That faith must be rooted in Christ alone. That is where we are together. The blood of Christ is the cord that binds us together. No one can break that cord. Two Christians are more united than two family members. Because we are talking of the blood of Christ now, eternal blood that binds us together. This God cannot be broken. No Jupiter can break it. Because his blood is eternal. John 5, 24. John chapter 5, verse 24. Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in, in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death to life. Look. If you give your life to Christ, if you are a Christian, if you are born again, you only experience the normal transition, death, the normal leaving the body and be united with Christ. You will not have the experience of eternal death anymore. It's a great news. You are not going to be totally separated from God for eternity. It's a great news. 
he had made that peace with his blood with God. So that if you believe in that work he did on the cross of Calvary, knowing fully aware well that you are a sinner that cannot save yourself, that you don't have what it takes to stand before God in your own righteousness, in your own holiness, to, to have eternal life with God. You don't have what it takes. None of us do. You do not have it. I don't have it. You don't have it. She doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. Nobody has it. And that's why Jesus came. You must know you are a sinner. You must believe you are a sinner. And you, are all, you can only be saved. You can only be saved by grace. It's not by work. And some of us, we are still making the mistake. You did not bring anything to the table. No, not by work. Lest any of us be boasting. You don't pay anything for this. You just have to do what? Believe. You must accept. You must trust what he did. That is done. It's done deal. He said, it is what? Finished. One of his statements, several statements on the cross. And I hope that we all understand this so that our fellowship shall not be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. John 20 verse 31. For these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. His name will be called Jesus. Christ is his ministry, his mission, Christ, to die for us, Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Don't let anybody deceive you that there are so many ways that lead to New York. So you can put you in a box. Don't tell me it's only one way to heaven. There is only one way to heaven. This is how God does his own thing. During the time of the tabernacle, how many ways do you get into the Holy of Holies? Only one. And the high priest goes there one time. No other way to get in there. So there's only one way to God now. And that is through Jesus Christ. Do not be deceived. Praise the Lord. And so we can, we can just stop here. And we pray we we'll continue. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. If we don't understand all these things, all the celebration, all the Easter, whatever we are doing, all the coming in, all coming out, it's, it's, it's meaningless. It's meaningless. I pray that God will grant us more understanding so that we shall continue this fellowship in heaven, in the mighty name of Jesus. I, I'm going to be there. What about you? I am going to be there. And, and I want to see everybody there so that we'll see each other, we'll rejoice. There will be emotional weeping. We we'll, we'll have emotion. Oh, man, you made it. Oh, my sister, you made it. Oh, wow, you made it. And we'll be rejoicing. And the Bible says there will be no more sorrow, no more weeping. The weeping, this is not just a good, you know, some people, they cry, you know, cry of joy. That's only a cry of, although there will be cry, cry of regret. Some of us are going to regret. All the time you have your, you are not spending any of your time for God. You are not spending any of your treasures for God. You are not spending any of your talent for God. You are not spending any of your, um, you know, knowledge for God. You are not spending, you are not giving God any portion of what he has given you. You think you're not going to regret when you get to heaven? Big one. But that does not mean you're not going to be saved. The, see, I thank God for the scriptures. I thank God for the scriptures. That thief on the cross gave us answers to, 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 to so many questions that you may have. If I don't do reconciliation, will I make it to heaven? Yes. If I don't pay my tithe and offering, will I make it to heaven? Yes. If I don't serve at all, will I make it to heaven? Yes. If I just stay on my own, I've given my life to Christ, call me to church, go to my house, come to church, go to my house, will I make it to heaven? Yes. Where is the example? The thief on the cross. All he did, he had no time because the Roman soldiers don't take no nonsense. They tie him on the cross. He can't say, now I'm a new person. The guy you tie here promised me heaven. Let me just quickly go down. And tell my wife, I am sorry. Tell that person I kill her you know, husband. Hey, I'm sorry. No time to do all that. All he did was to say, Jesus, remember, if first he rebooked this other thief who was blaming, him, blaming Jesus. He said, you are the Lord. You are the, save yourself and save us. The man said, don't you fear God? This man did not do anything. We are paying for what we did. He is thick there. He is innocent. Then he turned to Jesus and said, please, Remember me when you get to your father's kingdom. And what did Jesus say? Today. 
today. No waiting. You will be with me in paradise. He had no time to go and be doing reconciliation, restitution, to go and work for God, to go and pay tithe, to go and pay offering. You can make it to heaven without doing all those things. Don't let somebody tell you, you got to do, it, do those things. No. If you do them, yes, there's a place for the word. You'll be rewarded for doing it. But if you don't do it, you will still make it to heaven. Good. But there will be regret. Because we said, if I had known, oh God, if I had known, I would have done more for the Lord who died for me, who came and offered himself on the cross one time for me. If I had known, I would have spent part of my time. I would have spent part of my energy. I would have spent part of my talent. I would have spent part of my money. I would have spent part of my knowledge. For the Lord, how can we give, what can we give to God for what he gave to us? What can you give? What do you have? Daddy, we thank you. We bless you, worship you because we are good. Thank you for this wonderful time. Thank you for the Easter. As we proceed, Father, we pray that you go with us. Keep us. Let the celebration of resurrection continue in our lives. Everything that, everything that is dead in our destiny, let it be awakened by the power of resurrection. The mighty name of Jesus. Every sickness we furnish by the power of resurrection. Every pain, every need shall be supplied. The Lord will set us free as the Lord Jesus Christ came out of the grave triumphantly. We shall go out of all challenges of life triumphantly in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. God bless you. Love you all.